If it weren't for Fallout T. Farnsworth, inventor of television, we'd still be eating frozen radio dinners, the great TV talk show host Johnny Carson once said. And while no Australian inventor has created something that has colonised the collective consciousness of the world like TV, as Aussie Inventions That Change the World tells us, historically Australia has punched well above its weight on the world stage of timely inventions, scientific breakthroughs and cleverly designed new technologies. It's a neatly produced, rather breezy series that not only speaks to our lifestyle and sense of identity, but is made in the first instance to be entertaining while providing information as well. The series presents an impressive lineup of tenacious local inventors, each who envisaged a better way of doing things by finding material answers to the problems of their time, often in the face of enormous resistance or initial disregard. The archival footage alone is worth the price of admission. Comedian Matt Parkinson heads up a team of expert co-hosts, science journalist Anya Taylor, inventor Sally Dominguez and loquacious historian David Hunt. They investigate four different inventions within each episode, linked by a common theme. Whether it's home life, communication, wartime, farm smart, medicine, food preservation, airborne or supervision, inventions span different eras to reveal how Australian creativity made its mark in the domain. And our team of hosts chat with inventors and descendants, historians, engineers and model makers. We're also introduced to some juicy scandals, misappropriations and some chilling examples of intellectual theft. The first episode tells the tales of the Victor Motor Mower, the Hills Hoist, and the tragic story of Gilbert Toyne, who invented the prototype but never saw the financial rewards of his product, and the more recent dual flush toilet, which revolutionised water saving in this country. Most fascinating, though, is the story of Bondi's Myra Taylor, who in the 1920s changed the nature of fashion for women by inventing the boneless corset, and who, with a reportedly strong patriotic impulse, invented a barricade designed to repel enemy fire and machine gun fire and reduce the impact of shells. I went mm. to this thinking, oh, it's going to be the usual culprits, you know, the Mo Victor Motormar, mm. the Hills Highs. Well, it was. Uh, it was. <laughs> but... What was fabulous mm. about this is that the, the way they go into it, the yeah. research, the archival material, as you say. I mean, I love the story of Gilbert Toyne. Oh, that's a sad story. Well, you know, I mean, he did invent, it was because we called it the Hills Hoist. Yes, but he invented it well before. Didn't I mean, he yes. did it way before. And you know what he forgot to do? He forgot to renew his patent after World War yeah. II because he was in World War I yeah. and was gassed. And and came out with PTSD. What you know, um, continued with his company, mm. but you know, just forgot to renew that patent in the post World War Two, yes. and that's when Tragic yours story, came really. yeah. into the into the into the frame. And um, you know, you, you just sort of think, you know, I mean, this is a little guy. I think he was from Geelong, wasn't yeah. he? And you know what women had to do, you know. Lugging that line up yes. with all those sheets and posts to stick it up. <laughs> um, oh, thank God for the dryers. blokes were never doing that, were they? It was always the women doing it. It was never the men out there. You never see any <laughs> footage of men hoisting it up, <laughs> pushing it up. But mm. the story of Myra Taylor, I, I really, I like all the hosts. I like the way they go into the background. I'm learning stuff I never yeah, knew. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, Myra Taylor is sort of an amazing woman. You yes. Know? So yeah, I I I really enjoyed this. Yes, I did too. I it gave it just, me something that I hadn't expected. It's very very well produced, I think, and the photography is fabulous. Yeah. And as you say, the archival footage is absolutely it's beautifully researched. Yeah. It's a very yeah. very good program. Yeah, I think so. Too. Four stars for me. Me too. Corset madness peaked in the second half of the 1800s, when the practice of tight lacing saw women try to achieve that perfect 17 to 19 inch wasp waste. It's no surprise women had trouble breathing and walking. It was definitely time for a smarter approach to fashion.